Income tax 2022-2023, itemized deductions, gifts to charity, tax software examples. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point as usual, we've got the single filer, Mr. Anderson, W-2 wages, 100,000, 12,950 on the standard deduction, 87,050 for the taxable income mirrored over here in our tax software, tax formula, 100,000, 12,950, getting us to the 87,050, page two, doing the calculation of the tax. 14774, 15,000 withheld to get to the bottom line of 226, mirrored over here as well. However, we're focused up top on the calculation of the taxable income and focusing in on the itemized deductions and the particular deduction of the charitable contributions. Now remember, the charitable contributions are going to be in the itemized deduction area. You might have uh, remembered in a prior year where they basically uh, tried to kind of move some, some charitable contributions onto the first page of the 1040. But now we're back to basically where we were before that, that all the charitable contribu contributions are in the uh, itemized deduction area. Therefore, uh, you're only going to get a benefit generally from the charitable contributions if you're doing the itemized deductions. So remember, you're going to only itemize if you have itemized deductions that are adding up to greater than the standard deduction of 12,950 for single filers, 25,900 for married uh, filers. If you're talking with people or yourself filing tax returns that are nowhere near that threshold, it might not be worth your time to track all the information that you're giving to charity in as much detail if you're only doing that for your tax records because you might not be getting a benefit uh, for your tax records. Now, you would also want to check out your state as well. Sometimes state regulations, if you have an income tax, might have some benefit from, from charitable contributions as well. We're focused on the federal tax side of things uh, at this point in time. So also note, What's the main thing that usually pushes people over to be taking the itemized deductions? Owning a home, because that's where they have the real estate uh, loan. The loan's going to have the interest on it typically, and they're going to have the property taxes. Those are the two big ones that push us over. Once we are over the threshold, once we are already itemizing, then picking up anything else we can would be good, such as the medical, although they, al they also have that floor such as now the charitable contribution. So now they're gonna kick in and be, be helping us out uh, if we're over the threshold. So let's first imagine we're not over the threshold. Setting your threshold Christmas caroler. And we plug in some itemized deductions. So you're, you're I'm gonna jump, let's jump on over this way. I'll just go right into it here. Deductions, and we're gonna say itemized deductions, and we're gonna say contributions. Now, generally, we're going to be, for most of them, I'm going to be plugging into the 60% uh, percent limitation up top. And I'm going to say that these are going to be the normal kind of categorizations, which would be things like cash contributions for churches, mosques, and so on. Uh, the, the scouts, boys and girls clubs, and so on. The normal type of charitable contributions. It'd be good if we can list out the actual charities here. Uh, but I'm just going to put various, various charities and i'm going to put you know uh, let's say 500 into various charities and i'm going to say okay 
and then bring it on back to the forms. Now we've got the 500, but the only other thing that has been included up top is, I gotta get rid of those points, is gonna be the taxes you paid. So that means, even with the points here <laughs> that I'm gonna remove, that's still way under, nowhere near, the cl close enough to get us to where we need to be to clear even the single filer uh, standard deduction of the 12950 So for most people, the charitable contributions aren't going to be the thing that does it. Could be if they had an outstanding, they just gave a lot of money one year, but that's kind of rare. It's, that's not usually the thing that's going to be kicking people over. So what is going to kick people over, let's add the the home information and then we'll tack on the charitable contributions and we'll have a better benefit okay so now i have added i i've removed the charitable contributions for now and just added the big item which is the interest on the home let's say it was twelve thousand ten ninety eight uh, mortgage interest and then the property taxes of three thousand and then i'm just going to add the 1017 for the state uh for the state tax so let's put that over here and mirror that in our worksheet. I'm going to say Schedule A, mortgage interest 12,000, real estate taxes 3,000. The system is calculating the state tax at 1,017, 1017. That brings us up to the 1617. Is that what shows here? 1617, that pulls into page one of the form 1040. So that's going to be pulling into the 1617 because it's greater than the standard deduction of the 12,950. As we see in our worksheet here, we can see the 100,000, the greater of itemized deduction 1617 over the 12,950. Therefore, pick it up the 1617 to get us down to the uh, 83,983. Uh, and then we've got the taxes. Let's let the software do the tax calculation which is the 1492. So we're gonna say, all right, 14, one, four, this is 14092, boom. Okay, I'm gonna delete this for now. And now we can add the charitable contributions and they should give us some more benefit at this point. So we're gonna go, okay, let's add the charitable contributions now. We're gonna say this is gonna be the various items. Let's just put 500 and then now it's worthwhile for us to, to track that stuff, make sure we have the receipts and whatnot from the charitable organizations and we get that, that, that oftentimes shoebox full of charitable contribution type of stuff and it's worth going through and adding those up to get the 500 because that's going to add a little bit more benefit here, right? So now it's tacking on because we're already itemizing. So I can go back on over here and say, let's go to, to the gifts, charity 500 is going up. That brings us to the 16, uh, 5, 17. Is that what we have here? Yep. Let's go to the page one of the 10, 4, 0. 10, 4, roger that. Roger out. So there's the 100,000, the 16, 5, 17, and that gets us to the 83, 4, 83. And then if I let the software do the calculation, 13, 9, 82. So we were at, we were at, this 1409 and now we're at the 13982 so there now we've got a benefit lowering the taxes by 110 if i did that right 13982 from the charitable contributions so that's how that's the general process their work if they're nice easy uh cash contributions now there is a limit on the contributions and it's based on the AGI limit here, right? So if I put in a whole lot of contributions, which would be somewhat unusual for me to put like, what, 80,000 contributions in, uh, let's say when I made 100,000. So, so now I made 100,000, I put 80,000 contributions and we're gonna go down and say that it's been limited to uh, the 60,000. And you can go to the worksheets to see the limitations, but it's pretty straightforward that it was a 60% of AGI uh, limitation. AGI being not the income number typically, but remember most of these phase outs are based on the AGI. So if I had any above the line deductions, then they're usually, the, they're based on the AGI or a modification of the AGI. That being the, kind of like the baseline when we have these phase outs. Now also remember that we would of course want to have the documentation uh, from the charitable organizations uh, in general, and we don't attach those to the return usually, 
but instead if there was an audit we want to have those ready and available so that we can have the evidence related to them okay so the other common thing we might have if i go back on over here and say we have our gifts these are gifts by check uh, if you made any gift of 250 or more see instructions and then 12 other than cash or check so if you made any gift of 250 or more see the instructions you must attach form uh, 8283 if over 500 dollars so if they're under 500 dollars you might be able to get away with populating it right directly in there so let's go back on over for example All right, so let's go back and say that we're gonna say boom let's get rid of that one and say we have the non-cash contributions and you can see right here it says use screen 26 for total non-cash contributions over 500 dollars so no deduction is allowed for contributions of clothing or household items that are not in good use condition or better so you again that's a hard to determine exactly what that means good use condition or better uh, in addition a deduction for any item with minimal uh, monetary value may be denied so if we're under that threshold then i can go here and put the put that item in and there's the there's the 300 otherwise we would have to go to that form 8283 so let's look at the form 8283 shall we so i can go down here and jump there let's go to 8283 and this is going to be non-cash uh, charitable contributions attach one or more forms 8283 to your tax return if you claim a total deduction of 500 dollars for all contributed property so then you've got your information down below name of of the donee information on the donated property if donated property is a vehicle so on description and so on so i'm going to jump to the data input it won't let me jump to the data input well let's do it this way i'm going to go back on over here and i'm going to say let's then say it's going to go to screen 26 so i could find screen 26 and that's i could do that by going here and say i'm going to say non-cash contributions screen 26 and so now i need the name of the organization and so let's say be a good old goodwill good will i'm just going to make up the organization we need the address of the organization typically we would, ha we would have to have some kind of receipt from the organization usually the receipt will be fairly blah mundane saying hey here's our organization name here's a description of what you gave household goods or something like that right so deduct amount determined uh from schedule c taxpayer deduct uh did uh, delete this year now i'm going to say description of and condition of property description so i'm just going to say i'm just going to be very ge generic household goods something like that description and condition of property continued obviously you can get more descript on what it is that was uh, contributed vehicle identification number if it was a vehicle that was contributed rules can be a little bit different on contribution of a vehicle date of contribution let's say 0606 uh, 22 obviously it has to be in this year the taxable year uh, date date acquired I, we may not know the date required because it was sometime before that so i'm gonna i'm gonna put a negative 01 uh, zero, zero. and so that'll put a various i think in the software for this particular software uh, how you acquired it was it purchase gift inheritance exchange i'm just going to say purchased donors cost or basis we may not know that so we could try to estimate what we paid for it when we bought it possibly when it was new so i'm going to say it was let's say uh let's say it was two thousand dollars when it was new and the fair market value so again how do we know the fair market value it's going to be difficult to say you might do some kind of calculation with it and say well uh, and you could appraise there's a lot more appraisal tools that you can kind of kind of use these days to get a fair market value but if i took 2000 i'm just going to say divided by five and say that you know it's been a long time or whatever it's been i'm going to say fair market value uh based on the items selection high based on i'll say medium fair market method determined then we can try to give the method appraisal thrift shop value catalog uh comparable sales so i'll say like uh comparable sales con or maybe a thrift shop value let's say and then uh contribution deduction oh this is an override and the agi limit 
So I'm going to put the fair market value up here at 400. So that's why I'm going to put the fair market value. All right. So if I pull that over, then this is what we have thus far in the software. We've got the added form 8283, which is now being populated. We've got the name, address, a uh, household good as the description. And then down here, the date of contribution should be in 2022 various notice. I put a negative number in the date in this particular software that's puts various because obviously we might have a bunch of bag of goods or whatever that we gave or something. We're going to say that we purchased them. Uh, donors donors cost. I said 2000 and then 400 for the fair value. This determination of the fair value is of course, subjective because the only way you really know what the fair mar market value is is if you actually sold the stuff which you're not doing you're giving it away so so coming up with an appropriate fair value number is agonizingly <laughs> painful to try to figure out and then we said it was the thrift shop uh value so this of course then pulls into the schedule a so if i go to the schedule a then and we move on down to the gifts to charity now we've got the 400 uh, that is down here. It's under the 500. So I, I probably should have put a value over 500 to make it to make it. So we had to do that. Let's <laughs> put 600. So there's the 600. So that pulls over uh, like so. So there's that one. And then the other thing that could come up is you might have a carryover. Now the carryovers are not likely because uh, like we like I saw before when we when we had too much and we had to carry it over. Let's let's first look at that scenario again. So if I go back to my income on deduction on the schedule A, and we said that we deducted like 80,000 or whatever. And so now we were, we deducted way too much or more than is going to be allowed. And uh, it restricted us that I changed it to 80,000 up top. So then the, then the question, well, what am I going to, what do I, do I just lose that carryover? Uh, do I lose that deductibility? Well, no, normally you get to carry it over. So now you've got uh, line 13 would be a carryover from a prior year carried over into this year. And if we got a carry, if we deducted too much this year, then theoretically we would be able to carry it over into the next year. Now here's a worksheet summary of it. We have the 80,000 and then the 600 and then the carryover before uh, before conversion to NOL amount. So this is the carryover to next year, the 20,000 and the 600. So that's how the carryover would work. Now note that if you're doing this in practice, uh, if you take on a new client and the new client has a more complex return, which I would be, I would think anyone that has a schedule A because they're probably more high income individuals would have a more complex return that it might be worthwhile then to spend the added time and possibly money to get off on the right foot by taking the prior year tax return and populating that information into the the prior year software in this case 2021 so that you can that you can input the rollover properly into the current year let the software help to calculate the rollover and then double check it instead of instead of trying to populate all the rollover information into the current software so that's just a, a, a recommendation i'm going to go back on over and remove this one and let's remove this for now and say okay let's say there was a rollover from the prior year in the schedule a and so i'm going to say there was a rollover let's jump to that data input and i'll just do the 50 and then prior year let's do it here and let's say there was last year we didn't get to deduct you know three thousand because we were over the over the limit then this one's pulling in from the prior year so those rollovers get a little bit messy because of the timing you know the timing differences and whatnot so oftentimes again the software is quite helpful to pick that up if the software wasn't able to pick that up then you would have to be very you'd have to make sure you pick your notes from year to year to be very precise that you didn't get the deduction last year you do get it this year and like i say it's it's quite nice then to populate the prior year return into the 2021 so the software can help you to determine those rollovers and then and then you you know you have double you have two checks as to whether the rollover uh, is being picked up or not so i would do that for any kind of return personally that's over a certain level of complexity 
which often is indicated by having a Schedule A or a Schedule C, for example. So that's the general concepts for the uh, charitable contributions.